What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Toasty. Toasty. No, that's not. Oh, come back! I was watching it. Come back! Come back! I can do you again. I, can, I, get, I need another chance. No, it's 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 past. Oh shit! String broke. And as always, I'm your host Josh Berry. I'm your other host Chris Pico. And today we're going to talk about a few topics that cover movies, video games. Somewhat comic books. Comics, so basically sort what we do every episode, we try gamut. to. Yeah. Game Skippy. So uh, let's uh, let's jump into it. Magic of enemy. Take over. First thing, there was uh, news about a gentleman who sold the biggest game collection in the world. And it was how many? Uh, it was... 11,000? Well, it was 11,000 unique games. Unique games. But he had 20 complete systems in the U.S. Complete set. sets, yeah. Sets. Complete sets, yeah. So I'm going for one. Game. And one <laughs> only. Any of them. Out of all the systems in all the world, I'm going for one. The Dreamcast. Because Dream. it's, it's actually possible. kind of attainable. <laughs> yeah. Without having to blow massive amounts of money. Yeah. And a lot of people just get rid of them. I, 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 I find them. I find them extremely cheap. There's, I mean, there, are, there's maybe like six or seven games that are above like the fifty dollar range. Yeah. And maybe over. There's maybe like two or three that are over the hundred dollar range. Right. I'm not going to be jumping at those anytime soon, but I'm doing what I can. And most of those probably just U.S. Those aren't even talking about the Japanese. Oh, I'm not even going for that shit. I'm going for yeah. a complete U.S. set if yeah. I can. And you know what the sad thing is? I actually owned a lot of these really super expensive ones, and then I sold them. Yeah. That's what happens. Anyway, back on topic. <laughs> yeah, so the guy's name's uh, Michael Thomason. 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 And if you want to read about him, there is an, a two page article about this gentleman in the January 2014 issue of Game Informer, the one with uh, Destiny on the cover, issue 249. Um, and yeah, you can see that this, this person owns a lot of video games. <laughs> a lot. He basically has a uh, entire basement of yeah. just shelves from floor to ceiling. Pretty much, and even in like in between, like in the open space in between yeah. the walls, he's got like shelving units that are like all backed up against each other. It is insane. This is my greatest fear. It's not a bad <laughs> I, fear. I'm gonna be honest because like, yeah, I collect video games. Okay, yeah, I do. Do I want every video game? No. Well, if you I mean, like, for it's it. bad enough. I own two copies of Shaq Fu. <laughs> yeah, it's, you don't hear that every day. He has a complete Sega Saturn collection. Very hard to do because so many of those games are in the two hundred to four hundred dollar range, which I own. Uh, Sega CD, Dreamcast, you fuck. <laughs> uh, the Magnavox Odyssey complete, Atari seventy eight hundred collection complete, which is not hard to do, or any has Atari fifty two hundred, which is not no. hard. Uh, laser active. That is almost impossible to find because no one knows about it. Yeah. Uh, PCSX, Jaguar, Jaguar CD, and a complete 3DO, which is another one I was thinking about going for, but yeah. there's some pretty pricey games on that one as well. well but the, the guy, the guy's a professor, supposedly mm -hmm. like a professor. He's a stay-at-home dad. dad slash college professor. And he ran like a retail, resale, uh, video game online store, and I guess his own store store too. So. He uh, he had a good opportunity to get his hands on them, yeah. Um, and to get the to get the to get the uh, hard ones for. A and weren't you saying that he also a lot of them are still sealed? Yeah, I think they said like that's uh, hard to do. A thousand, a thousand of them, thousand that's, of the games yeah. that he sold were still factory that's, sealed. That's that's hard to do if you don't got some money behind you because I've come across a few. I, st I own a few that are still sealed. They're not going to be sealed for much longer, but they were. The ones that I do have sealed were very inexpensive games. I mean, like, I bought Wing Commander Prophecy for the, the uh, uh, Game Boy Advance. I got it for, like, eight bucks on eBay. It's still it's not yeah. going to stay sealed because I love you some Wing Commander. <laughs> Wing Commander. One of, my Tron, one of my Tron time. games for the Atari uh, 2600 is still sealed, but once I get an Atari 2600, oh, that wrapper's coming off. Yeah. It's going Definitely. I play the so. Tron. But that's just an, that is insane. He, you said he's been collecting that specific collection since 98? Yeah. 98. He had three other sets. He sold one for his wedding, to pay for his wedding, and he sold another one to do something, I forget. Pay for a bris? Or pay for college or something like <laughs> really? that. Um, 
But yeah, this guy, this guy knows, he knows the business. I'd like to sit down and talk with him, see yeah. how many of those games he's actually played, because it's a lot of games but, to see, not play. I yeah. know. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's my thing, is like, we're talking about this before we shoot it, we shot anything. Yeah, I have a lot of video games that I've collected. I'm now going to stop so I can actually play them. <laughs> because what's the point of owning them if you aren't doing anything with them? Yeah. Yeah they, yeah, they look nice on the shelf and all, but they kind of defeats the purpose of having a video game that you're not playing. Yeah. Even a bad one. Shaq food. Looks like Shaq Daddy's gonna have to whoop some ass. Fuck you. Okay, we're gonna talk some Star Wars right now, but I'm not gonna rant. Um, that, that that happened, it's over, it's behind me, <laughs> it's past. Moving you know. on. Yeah, moving but, on. Okay. So they're currently shooting episode seven right now, and and ever since the rant, I have been lightening up about it. They're like, okay, it could be kind of cool. Yeah, you know, who knows? You know, you never, you never know. know. Like, happens. I'm not gonna judge until I see a trailer or something. Yeah. Like, I'm not doing that with the Batman Superman thing with Batman F. Like, I want to. I'll wait till I see a trailer before I say anything bad. Yeah. Um, but I guess during the, over the past week, they were shooting a scene in the Millennium Falcon set. Uh, Harrison Ford, who is playing Han Solo again. Uh, was walking through a doorway where they had like one of those power doors that slides shut like this, and apparently his foot got caught in it, and it shattered his ankle. And the word on the street at first was, "Oh, it's just like he sprained his ankle, or he twisted it, or he's just he's just he's just injured. He'll be back on the set in a week. You know, they'll just let him give him some bed rest. He'll be fine." No, it turns out like his ankle got shattered, and they're gonna have to put pins in it. This guy is like in his seventies. <laughs> oh man. Seventy-year-olds don't heal as fast as a twenty-year-old would. So they're saying that he's going to be out for quite a while, and they had just started shooting this thing. So they're either going to have to like rewrite the script real fast to try to like work him out of scenes and put someone else in his place, for ha Mark Hamill, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and or reshuffle the schedule so they can wait and shoot everything that doesn't have anything to do with Harrison Ford, and then do all that at the end. Yeah. And hope that he heals correctly. And hope that he can actually do stunts yeah, and running around if that was what was required of him. Get that old and break an ankle like or, that. You may have to re-break it and then do it again. You know, like Someone his age can't deal with that shit. Yeah. The one good thing is about this is that they're, they're using creative. real <laughs> compressor doors. That's kind of cool. Yeah, no CGI here. Yeah, that's kind of cool. There's one good thing about it. They're using some oh, real JJ, sets and shit. Oh, JJ, you're giving me some faith in yeah, the project. That's the one good thing we tell. The thing is that one of the greatest uh, badass actors, badass guy actors of our time just broke his ankle. Oh, man, that's, that's, that's Deckard, man. Yeah. That's Deckard. Respect the Deckard. I respect the Deckard. Mm. Yeah, I wish him the best of luck. Yeah, I hope, better, I, hope, I hope he's okay. I really do. Get better. Much love. <laughs> Much love, so love. So love. I'm so low, I'm hot so low, I'm hot so low, I'm hot so low, so low. I'm hot so low. Some of the news that was released this past week, we're dating ourselves again, <laughs> was that DC, when it comes to their films, actually is making this big master plan the way the Marvel has been doing it with their movies. Like, you know, like we have Wave 1 and Wave 2 and we're in the middle of Wave... We're almost at the end of Wave 2, actually. We've only got two more movies left. Yeah. And then Wave 3, well, DC's kind of like, we've been working on this thing for a while, too. Here's our release plan for the DC universe, you know, of uh, feature films, right? So what they have planned, everyone knows already about the first one, and that one is Batman vs. Superman. This has a name now. It's Batman v Superman versus Superman Dawn of Justice, which means basically this is the jumping off point. They're using the popularity of Batman and the popularity of Superman to jump off the, the Justice League. So they're going to introduce a lot of Justice League characters in here, maybe give them their own movie, maybe not, maybe just save them for the big Justice League movie, the real Justice League movie. Yeah. Right, and we already know in this one that they've cast Wonder Woman. And it's Gal Gadot from the newer Fast and Furious movies. She's been in them. She's been in them since the fourth one, and the sixth one is her last one. Um, she's playing Wonder Woman. I haven't seen pictures of her in the outfit yet, but she's kind of rail thin. She looks like a supermodel, so I don't know how that's gonna work. Yeah. And then recently, like you were bringing up, recently they cast Jason Momoa, who played Conan a couple years back, as Aquaman. Yeah. Which I think is pretty rad. Yeah. Well, and if you've seen him in. Um 
Game of Thrones. Yeah, even, with Cal Drago. I mean, yeah, I think I think because Aquaman. I mean, especially with his voice, because Aquaman. See, that's the thing. Is Aquaman kind of is viewed as a pussy. And, yeah, he's kind of viewed as like the pointless superhero. It's like, what does yeah. what does he do? I talk to fish. Yeah, which is kind of lame. Yeah, but at but least in Injustice, <laughs> he could do some cool stuff with right. sharks. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, if you want to make him threatening and menacing and you know, kind of a you know, kind of cool. I mean, like that's the kind of person you want to cast. You want to cast someone who's going to do a different thing with it and not show that I don't just talk to fish. Right. But he yeah, does. I'm cool with that. Yeah, I'm good with that. And that is supposed to come out in May 2016. And then in July 2016, I mean, they're really pushing these. Yeah. They haven't even started filming any of these either. July 2016 is Shazam. Billy Batson. I think that would be cool. I think that's Shazam like, that's, deserves that's, his own My only own problem chance. with Shazam is like he's like kind of like a generic Superman. Well, he oh, that's definitely what he is. Yeah. He, he's he's the trailer trailer park Superman, yeah. but uh, but he's got enough good qualities. I think be, I think basically that one would just mainly depend on who they cast as Billy Batson and who they cast as Shazam. Yeah. Uh, and then Christmas 2016 is Sandman. Which is um, which a lot of people Gaiman, isn't for. it? That's that's yeah. uh, Neil Gaiman's comic book. Yeah, that could a be of, pretty badass. Yeah, a lot of people have wanted a Sandman movie. A lot of fans have wanted a Sandman movie for yeah. a while. I mean, I've never I've, I know about it. I've read about it. I've never actually read it. No, I, I haven't either. Because I've never really. I mean, I like Neil Gaiman. I like his he's creative and all that kind of stuff. I just never actually read any of his stuff, which I think I need to do. It's kind of about time. Yeah, but. That could be pretty rad, because I know about the character, and it's, it's pretty awesome. That could be cool. Yeah, I don't know a lot. I just know that I see him pop up a lot in forums and talks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then May 2017, see, so they're, not, they're not fucking yeah, around. They're going to pump them out. they got to catch 20, up. Well, here's the thing. is like one year you've got the one that's the introduction to the Justice League, and then the next May, the following May, you've got the actual Justice League movie. Shit. Goddamn. Yeah. That could be the either the best movie of all time or the worst movie of all time. Because, yeah. Just I mean, make it if, fun. All if you've seen the TV movie fun, that they yeah. made that did not come out right, <laughs> you know that Justice League can't be fucked up pretty easily. We all need heroes in our lives. Sometimes we find them in the most unlikely places. Ah! Zack Snyder, who directed Man yeah. of Steel, and he's directing he's the, the, he's the Batman, good. he's doing Justice League also. Which could be cool. Maybe maybe Ben Affleck teaches him a few things yeah. of re about reeling it in. Yes, yeah, I, I like Zack. He just, there's... He's got an eye. He knows what he's... Do and he it, can get actors it, to act. Yeah, he knows what he's doing, but he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. You know, like, there's just... Well, he's got really, punch. really, str a lot of strong points. But all the other, like, his weak points, is like he just kind of tries to hide them. So, May 2017, Justice League. July 2017, Wonder Woman. They're actually... That was the big thing, was, like, they only wanted to make male-centric... You know, yeah. male hero movies for some reason. DC yeah. was just kind of like, oh, I don't know if Wonder Woman's going to work. We'll make, okay, instead of making a movie, we'll make a TV show, and that didn't even get off the ground. Jeez. And it's That's just like, because Wonder Woman deserves her own movie. She's Wonder an Wonder's interesting great. fucking character. She's a queen. She's a yeah, fucking, she's a fucking queen. Amazon, man. Yeah, she's an Amazon. She's a warrior queen. woman. God, if Xena made it, why can't Wonder Woman? He was basically. Mila Jovovich <laughs> is still making Resident Evil movies. Yeah. Female action heroes are a thing. Yeah. Wonder Woman, seriously, if you made a good Wonder Woman movie, people will show up. Yeah, I'll go watch Wonder Woman. I like Wonder yeah. Woman. I think Especially she's great. Especially if Mila Jovovich is playing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, then Christmas 2017. See, we're getting three of these a year. Uh, Christmas 2017 is a Flash and Green Lantern team-up movie. So uh, I, like, I like both. I love both those characters. Flash is awesome. About Green movie. Lantern is my favorite, probably my favorite superhero. Green Lantern is awesome because, like, who and doesn't love having the awesome. power of your imagination? Yeah, that's why it was. That's why he was such a big like when I was me and you were growing up. Like, Green Lantern was the thing. He was a big, big, big See, character. I never, knew, I never, did, I never heard about him. I, I had I all of his did. action figures. I mean, I knew had about the him. lamp, the big green like uh, ring lamp. See that? See, I guess I'm behind the times because I didn't actually get into Green Lantern until maybe early two thousands. So I really didn't. No, I, I knew of the character. I'd seen him in the cartoons and stuff. Yeah. And I was just like, I was just kind of like, eh. Yeah. And then like, I'm like, you know, I should probably. I said to myself, I was like, you know, I should probably read one or two of these. And I read um, Emerald Dawn, whatever. And that was what kind of sealed the deal for me. I'm like, wow, this is actually kind of awesome. Yeah, and then I just really got into it. 
Flash, you, you guys have already, if you watch the show, already know I love Flash. Flash is awesome. I love Flash. I just don't know how to put them in the movie together. Well, here, I, I understand. I can why. understand why they're doing it. It's because the Flash probably doesn't have enough going on to sustain a feature film. Because like, if you look at his rogues gallery, is actually kind of lame. Yeah, he's he's better in a group. Yeah, I mean, he, it, like, like I said, like if they made a Flash cartoon, I would watch it, but I probably wouldn't think it was great. Mm -hmm. You know, and he works really good as a comic book character, like in the comics, it's fine. But like as a TV show, like we all saw that TV show from the '90s, it wasn't all that good because <laughs> it's like, like I say, his his rogues gallery is kind of lame. Yeah. But you throw him into that Justice League cartoon, and he's the main. He's the he's the balls. He's, he's awesome. Shit. Yeah. He's great. And the, Michael Rosenbaum played him awesome. I thought he was amazing as Green Lantern or as a uh, Flash. And then we've already had a Green Lantern movie, and that kind of got botched up. Mm -hmm. But so I understand why they're teaming up. They're like, okay, having these two in the same movie will just solve a lot of problems. Like we can just have them be. Yeah. They're gonna introduce them in the Justice League movie, and then here they go, team up. Yeah. And then on May 2018, we have Man of Steel two, an official Man of Steel sequel, the one that we were supposed I to get. I can't believe that they're waiting that long. Well, that's the thing is like I actually thought that this Man of this Batman vs Superman movie was actually gonna be a, a Superman movie that just happened to have Batman in it, and now it's turning into something completely yeah. different and I'm like oh yeah, that's cool and all but I mean like to me it also said they had no faith in Superman because I know that they said Man of Steel kind of underperformed because it had a huge budget yeah. and a huge advertising budget and it was like it kind of basically just kind of broke even at the box office and I was just kind of like okay well they want to keep making these movies because they eventually want to get to a Justice League movie but they don't really have faith in a standalone Superman movie so they're just going to throw Batman in it to get people's yeah. butts in the seats. But it turns out that's not the case. I think they're hoping to build him back up through this Batman, Superman, and then the Justice League movie, and then be like, now, yeah. there you go, now I'll have at it. <laughs> and even though it's not on the list, there's still a rumor floating around that Guillermo del Toro might make a Justice League dark film, which I think would be kind of awesome, because if you got the Justice League movie, then you've got the anti, not anti-Justice League, but the... The, the, the Dark Justice League. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. That, so that, word, that title just yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's why they it named says it says it all. <laughs> and I don't, not, I don't really know anything about that at all. I, the only reason I, I bought this was because of Del Toro talking about how he wants to make this in a movie. And basically, it's like all of the dark superhero slash supernatural characters from the DC Universe, like Dead Man. Constantine. Yeah, finally. you got John Constantine in here. You've got uh, Dead Man. Um, I think Enchantress is in here. But it's like all of the, the people who are not so nice but are still considered heroes. Or it's it's like this is like their thing. This is like them getting together to stop even worse yeah. people from doing things. Or chaotic neutral. Yeah, chaotic neutral. There you go. The chaotic neutral yeah. justice league. Yeah, like this guy, Del Toro does, uh, does stuff, room. man. He does good stuff. He does good stuff. So yeah, I'd like to see I'd like to see this. I don't know anything about it, but I go watch it. Like I, I said, Del Toro. I think, I think that's a good idea. I think that needs to be on your schedule ASAP. Yeah. Make it happen. I bet DC might be afraid that he may make that better than the other <laughs> 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 And then they're all fucked up. Oh, yeah, shit. and they're like, watch, they the, watch, the, watch the first cut of it, and they're like, yeah. the first 20 minutes is better than the whole Justice League movie. <laughs> the guy what, have what have we done? What have we done? And the Toro's like, I just, I just, just like, want to have fun. I just, I just, ma I just make it work. Yeah, I just make. It I work. just do. The, I just make the movie. I like, I like making. It happens. It just happened like that. It's a cool. It's, it's a happy coincidence. <laughs> well, recently, before this episode came out, um, the infamous and the great E three happened. Um, video games. Video games. For stuff. those not. Not the know. Yeah, it's the big video game release. All, all companies save for their big release, their trailers, their news, all this in this day. Yeah, it's a really cool big, day. Big games that are coming out for all the major systems. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, it's if, you're, if you're a, a gamer, it's kind of yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Um, I personally though have stopped with kind of the E three thing. I appreciate what it is, but I'm no longer someone who kind of. I used to sit. I used to sit at home and watch it live. Well, they actually stream it or something. Through the Xbox, really? Xbox used to stream it live. I had no idea. Um, I, I would see parts of it live uh, when um, G4 TV was still going. They uh, would show parts, whatever, and I was always really into it and excited. Um, the reason I got over it, and why I, why the reason me and Chris even want to talk about this is that I'm really same as Chris. We're both really tired 
of the who won. Um, yeah, because talk. Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo were there to show off their big plans for their big systems. You know, the Xbox One, the PS4, and the Wii U, and all that, and the 3DS. But it's just kind of like, yeah, who won? That's all I, mean, I hear about yeah. is people going like, well, who won E3? Uh, we all won. We did. <laughs> like anyone who plays games won. Yeah, there's there's, gonna, there's cool bound to be coming. something for you, you know, in from all three of them. As far as I was concerned, I saw cool things for all three systems. Yeah, I'm not going to sit there and say like Sony had more cool stuff, so therefore I'm going to just go with the stuff. No, I mean I, I want to buy a Wii U now because of the cool stuff I saw. But you know what? I also want to buy a PS4 because there was cool stuff for that too. Yeah, and I kind of want to get an Xbox One. I don't know if I will, but there was a lot of cool stuff for Microsoft too. Yeah. So like, if you're a gamer, E3 is all win. Yeah. There is no winner. There is no loser. As long as there's a show and there's new stuff coming out, we yeah, all win. We all win. There's no this isn't competition. We live in a time where there have been great consoles and there are great consoles right now. And there's going to be more really good consoles. Um, so, like, we win. Like, there's no, there's no, don't get caught up in the uh, who's better, do this, want to give this. Bullshit. Yeah, don't get caught up in that. Just enjoy the moment. You know, like when we were growing up, there was one system, and we we're thankfully they were decent. Like, if, well, like Chris had the Atari and then the Nintendo. Like Nintendo was my was my era, yeah. like beginning of my era. So it was we were lucky that it was a good system, and they put out a lot of stuff. But it may not have been as good. You have video games stuff. to begin with. Yeah, be lucky, be happy that you actually have video games to play. And we can take you can play video games on your phone. You can play video games. You're like there's games everywhere. Like it's it's awesome. We win. We've already won. The nerds have won. The nerds have won. Time for the wrap up. That's awesome. That's fun. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, covered a lot. Yeah. Um, kind of random, just whatever. These are just things that, you know, we haven't really actually. To be honest, we haven't sat down here and done this for a while, so. There's just some random stuff we figured out, talked about. Yeah. Had some fun. Got some good stuff. So, uh, once again, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We need you to subscribe. Uh, we have a lot We have a lot of really cool ideas, places we want to shoot, things we want to do. Um, but we need subscribers. We need people to see that people have subscribed. That's how people get behind us. So, please subscribe. Um, if you can, I think it's just an email and stuff to even be part of YouTube. It's nothing yeah. serious. And shit, if you got a cell phone, they already know you exist. Quit hiding. <laughs> just fill out, a, fill out an email address, get you a YouTube account, subscribe for us. Um, like us on Facebook. Talk to us on Facebook. Yeah, follow uh, us on Twitter. And tw the tweets. Yeah. Get on there and tweet, tweet. Tweet. And, uh... Yeah, and let us know down in the comments uh, about things like uh, what we talked about today. And anything, once again, anything you want us to talk about, we'll, we'll do it. Let Promise. us know. So, until uh, we meet again, peace and hair grease. Oh, yeah, by the way, Josh. Free!